does claim that it was not racially motivated. He apparently has an issue, uh, what he considers a, a, a sex fiction, and sees these locations as something that allows him to, uh, to, um, to go to these places, and, and it's a temptation for him that he wanted to eliminate. So he, he understood um, the gravity of it, and he was pretty much fed up at, and kind of at the end of his rope, and, uh, and yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. Good evening, I'm Ian Hanamancy. The Toronto gathering was part of a cross-Canada day of action with other events taking place in Calgary and Vancouver. Organizers said racism and violent attacks against people of Asian descent during the pandemic must stop. A solidarity rally is being held downtown this afternoon. People are gathering for the event aimed at raising awareness against anti-Asian racism. The rally is organized by a number of groups, including the Asian Canadian Labour Alliance and the Chinese Canadian National Council for Social Justice. Nathan Phillips Square was pulsing today as thousands gathered for a rally against anti-Asian racism. Members of the Asian Canadian community, along with their allies, stood side by side in their masks, shouting a united message. Thousands showed up today and stayed even after organizers warned the crowd that they received a report of a potential threat. A recent report by the Chinese Canadian National Council found from March 10th of last year to February 28th of this year, there were 1,150 cases of racist attacks across Canada reported on their web platforms. You don't have to be Asian to support somebody who's being the victim of, of verbal assaults. Uh, comments on the subway, you know, for example. I think we all have a responsibility to our fellow citizens to speak out. I would ask you to stop and have a moment of silence to remember those women whose lives were taken from them, who were murdered simply because they were Asian women. Canadians should definitely not feel proud of our cult, multicultural and diverse nature because the truth is uglier than that. We are just as racist and just as sexist as the Americans. Anti-Asian racism is not new. Hypersexualization and sexual violence against Asian women is not new. Racism and misogyny did not begin in the pandemic. They will not end even when the pandemic ends. Racism and hate knows no boundaries. CCNCSJ stands in solidarity against anti-black racism and anti-indigenous racism. We stand in solidarity against Islamophobia. We stand in solidarity with migrant communities and those with precarious immigration status. We stand in solidarity with sex workers who are especially vulnerable to harm and dehumanization. As we gather to rally, we contextualize recent experiences of COVID-19 related anti-Asian racism in a long history of systemic anti-Asian racism in Canada. That includes the head tax, Chinese Exclusion Act, the Kamigato Maru incident, Japanese internment camps, and a racist immigration policy that continues to promote racism and exclusion. Anti-Asian racism doesn't exist in a vacuum. Racism toward our community is situated in a broader reason against all BIPOC community in the framework of white supremacy. It is our mothers and grandmothers who are being spit up. 
to challenging times, such as this pandemic, reveals our values and priorities as individuals, but also as a society. When those with power and influence do not lead with humanity and empathy, or do not condemn and act against hate, it is our communities who will face the consequences. We should all use our voices to proudly say, we are not perpetual foreigners, we are not your model minority, we all belong here. You have to say it's not a Chinese virus and it's not our fault. Within a span of four days, there were two hate-motivated incidents that were reported in my community. Racist vandalism that was scrawled on public infrastructure on the wall of a private building. And the words were, go home, chink. Well, guess what? We are home. We need to approach racism with an intersectional lens. Racism is multidimensional, and racism can also manifest itself in gendered racial violence. We're from Butterfly. We're formed by massage practitioners and sex workers. In 2019, a sister in Toronto was murdered in a massage parlor. We want the murdered sisters to be remembered. No more sisters being robbed sexually harassed, hated, or murdered. Calling the police doesn't work for us. The police and law enforcement officers treated us with disrespect, conflated our profession with human trafficking, and affected our work. We can only rely on them ourselves to keep ourselves and our sisters safe. We have a demand. One. Full decriminalization of sex work. Two, recognize sex work is work. Three, rights, not rescue and stop policing. Four, sex work, not trafficking. Stop conflating sex work with human trafficking. Five, fight racism, sexism, classism, and horophobia. Six, no cops at workplaces. Seven, status for all, and eight, Guarantee access without fear to all government services. White supremacist violence is carried out by individuals, but it's maintained and reproduced every day through systems that normalize the devaluation of our lives and labor. Let us not see the Atlanta shootings and the rise in anti-Asian racism in isolation. Let us see these violences as horrific examples of how power is exercised in a racially codified colonial society. We must name this. Poor, queer, non-binary, black, indigenous, and racialized women face violences every day of our lives. This is the order of business in a racial capitalist state built on land theft, and genocide. I love Toronto. I believe in Toronto, despite the fact that my grandparents and parents who were forcibly uprooted from BC could not resettle in Toronto because there were quotas and bans preventing Japanese Canadians from living here. Exercise your right to vote because Japanese Canadians were denied the vote until 1949. The women in my hometown survived all the centuries of oppression, but forced out by poverty and labor export policy of a rotting system, by the thousands they left in search of livelihood. Gone to 186 countries around the world, set aside their professional degrees, had to accept jobs at all levels to make survive families and relatives. Long live the Filipino people! Long live the Filipino women! My name is Carol Wall. I am a labor community activist and I've added to that abolitionist. The urgency and the collective trauma of this moment calls for nothing less than a renewed abolitionist movement. This can only happen when we come together and we don't let our communities be 
divided by colonialist mentalities and internalized racism. And today we are rising together, Asian, Black, racialized, indigenous, to say we end anti-Asian racism where we abolish white supremacy. We end anti-indigenous racism where we abolish white supremacy. We end anti-Black racism where we abolish white supremacy. Rise up, abolitionists. Rise up. We've got work to do. One. Concretely fund community-led organizations that do the anti-racism education. Two, use an intersectionality approach to see that anti-Asian and all forms of racism happens to those who are most vulnerable. Three, for a just recovery support strategy for small businesses like restaurants and grocery stores so that small businesses are equipped to respond to racist attacks. Four, Finally, for the protection for all workers, that all workers have access to paid sick days, and ensure that status on arrival so that all migrants and people with precarious immigration status are protected. There are 5,000 people here today. We are going to count on you, not only today, but tomorrow and after. Thank you very much.